Okay, in this video, uh, I'd like to carry off where we, um, our, our pickup by where we, where we left off and, and continue with the uh, inhibiting uh, properties. So uh, we inhibited the servo um, axis on the last video. This video, I wanted to show you that you can inhibit the actual uh, module itself. And again, not by going in and uh, right clicking and inhibiting but uh, through the axis or, or through the actual code. So um, the reason on the last video that you've seen it actually uh, fault out is because I was basically showing it as an example of what to do, what you can do. And um, the, the coding is slightly different. Instead of a one or a zero, um, the coding is actually a four if you want it to inhibit. So um, again, so what I was actually showing is that you could do it. Uh, what I meant to do is have a separate video. So this is that video. So um, again, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and add that uh, SSV in here. SSV. Um, in the, the class that we're going to use, this is going to be a module. So instead of being an axis, it's going to be a module because we're going to point to our IO module which would be our kinetic 6000. The instance we're going to use is where we're going to point to the module that we want to use, which we're going to point directly to our controller, our kinetic 6000. The um, attribute name that we want to do is the mode. So we want to actually control the mode of, of what it's doing. The uh, source, again, you can't just put uh, a figure in here, like you can't just put four. Um, you need to put a tag, something that's changeable. Now, um, in that tag, you can put, um, so what we'll do is we'll put kinetics uh, 6000, and then we'll put uh, current mode. Okay, so then we're going to leave this as a dent, um, and that way we'll come in here. What we can do, too, if we don't want it changeable, is we can put in this constant so that it can't be changed. So that, see, this can't be changed, like, throughout the program right here. What you have to do then is go to the um, tag database and do it that way. But um, without showing that, that we're not going to talk about that right now. What we want to do is give an easy function, an easy how, how to, if you would. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and assemble that. Again, um, this system is 100% working. Um, it's fully functional at this point in time. You know, I could start the system, um, actually cut it on, have it run. So you can see it's actually running right now. Um, it's, it's running this and as soon as it gets done it will go here so okay so you know the system is fully functional at this time um, again so that nothing I've done here has affected that you know at all <clears throat> so what we can do is I'll show you you can just merely just change this to a 4 and now we have uh, inhibited our um, our kinetic 6000 drive this is our servo drive, right? This is the actual node that we're inhibiting this time. Not the axis itself, but we're, we're actually inhibiting the um, controller, the drive, the servo drive itself. Now, this is to be controlled and done at a different level. Like, if, say, if you're controlling, if you're trying to troubleshoot something completely different, then you can do it this way. But just know that if you do this, then you're not as far as what you're doing as far you know as far as your access and stuff of that nature um, it's still it's still updating and still doing everything it's supposed to be doing but it cannot be can actually controlled so again both of these actually show both of these videos actually show that you cannot control the system but in in the case of what we're trying to show um, you know I can like if I threw my other switch I can enable or I can basically inhibit both of these at one time so uh, there's two different ways to go about it and so I felt that it was necessary to add this video as well to bring a sense of clarity to you know different ways to actually break down the system and inhibit things without having to actually go and, and um, you know hardware bypass or anything like that 
So in that same focus, what we can do now is we can say, well, let's just use this in the switch, right? Let's just do the same thing, the disable. So let's come up here and let's throw another move in here, right? So we'll, we'll grab another move. We'll come in here, we'll throw another uh, branch level. We'll throw another move in there. And what we'll do is come up here in this section. Oh, sorry, get back up there. Come back up in this section. And then we'll put a zero. Or I'm sorry, this would be a four. Um, and then a zero. So we basically do not want to inhibit anything unless we actually cut the disable button on. And then we want to disable both of these. So you can do the you can choose to do these one at a time or you can choose to do them both together. What I'm I'm just basically trying to show that you can inhibit uh, both of these in the, by just using servo can, or just basically using ladder logic, um, not doing anything else. Um, in this video, again, I just wanted to show the breakdown between uh, disabling a servo axis and disabling a, a, a servo controller or a drive, if you would, the Kinetic 6000, the actual node itself. So um, with that said, uh, we'll go ahead and move on to the next video. I'll show you, you know, how to uh, another troubleshooting feature we're like with, with that it may be helpful is with you actually removing the motor itself and then watching the servo ring go one, two, three, four and get to a happy state again. So again, um, this was just to show, you know, some clarity around actually disabling and the whole system if you wanted to, or if you just wanted to, you know, you can just do the first, the, the first thing is, is just doing the axis. Uh, the second thing is just doing the, um, controller. And the third thing is doing both of them. So the next thing that we can actually do for troubleshooting, and again, there's probably like 10 or 20 different ways you can go about this, but I figured I'd show you the more easy ways to do this. And in some rare instances, you would get some faults that would require you, um, faults, when I mean faults, I mean faults on the servo drive itself, the Kinetic 6000, that would require you to troubleshoot in this type of depth. So, um, it's only fair to that, you know, I actually show you this type stuff, right? So again, um, this is just part of the training and then part of what we're, we're going to do. So what we'll do is we'll carry on to the next video. And again, I really, I appreciate you, uh, your participation and, uh, we'll, we'll keep on with the training. Thank you.